Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I trust and hope you're doing great and we're going to be talking about all the activity in the Caribbean. So there is Invest 97L and there's all that activity associated with a low pressure center and a trough in the Northern Caribbean that's helping to produce a lot of activity across some areas, bringing some heavy rainfall and even increasing that flood threat. And so let's get straight into it. And so the Invest is located within that region. As we can see, it's not producing a whole lot of activity. There's no organization right now, and it still has a little chance of trying to get itself together before it eventually moves inland. We'll talk more about it in a moment, but then across some of the eastern islands and headed further west into the eastern Caribbean Sea, there we can see that cluster of all those showers and thunderstorms, and even in the vicinity of the ABC Islands and for parts of Venezuela, there is some activity within the region and then to the far right on your screen there you can see some of that convection associated with some activity out in the main development region so that could help to increase the rainfall chance for some of the lesser Antilles later today we'll go on to that map uh, showing the rainfall forecast very shortly Headed toward Jamaica, going to Cuba, even near the Cayman Islands and Haiti, we can see that there is a lot of activity going up to the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. So with that low pressure center and the trough in the area, that is helping to enhance all of these showers and thunderstorms. Now, these little blobs of deep convection can pop up anywhere within the area. So if it is over land, we know that that's likely to induce a lot of heavy rain. And how do we know them? Well, on the satellite imagery, there are represented by those darker shades of red going to that black and that gray and even seeing some purple shades in the midst that is showing that those clouds are very very high and the white dots indicate the lightning strikes and those are usually the clouds which contain all the activity all that rainfall as you can see they're popping up all over the place so when they're over land over parts of cuba even sections of jamaica that is when we receive a lot of heavy rainfall for example last night within my area there was a lot of heavy rain just after 11 or uh, headed to 12 a.m. somewhere thereabout. We're also seeing that activity as I said in parts of the Bahamas going to the Turks and Caicos Islands. Not a whole lot at the moment for the Cayman Islands but there is that front coming down and ahead of that front there's going to be uh, a lot of rainfall activity across portions of Central America even going toward Cuba and some other areas as well, the Bahamas. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rainfall forecast. This is from Euro. As it becomes more colorful, as this map becomes more colorful, that is indicative of a lot more heavy rain. And so, especially when we see those shades of purples and pinks, and even the burgundies as well, a lot of heavy rain. There's likely to be flooding across some areas. So starting from the east, we can see that for sections of the Leeward Islands, Anguilla, going to St. Martin, St. Barthelme, St. Bas, St. Eustatia, St. Kitts and Nevis, potentially for Montserrat and uh, even going to Barbuda. There might not be as much rainfall compared to the rest of the Lesser Antilles. We're seeing uh, the rest of the islands going southward in those shades of yellows, oranges. So going to Antigua, Guadeloupe, Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada, even across some parts of Trinidad, Tobago, and Barbados, there could be some periods of very heavy rainfall as we head through today. In the vicinity of the ABC Islands, we're seeing some of those burgundy shades. So there could be those periods of very heavy rainfall across some areas and that can trigger flooding. Similar story across Colombia going to Venezuela and potentially for sections of the Guyanas as well, especially for Guyana. Now looking up into portions of Hispaniola going to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, we're not seeing where a whole lot is expected. Maybe some showers popping up here and there, but it may be a pretty sunny day across many areas. And then as we drift over toward Jamaica going to eastern Cuba the Cayman Islands up into the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands again uh, with the activity ahead of that front and with that trough and low pressure center within the area all of that is going to be induced in a lot more heavy rainfall across some areas. It won't be the case for everywhere across Jamaica, eastern parishes will have a better shot at seeing more rainfall activity or experiencing more rainfall activity compared to the rest of the island. But again, those are the bursts of convection. It depends on where they pop up. That is where a lot of that heavy rainfall could take place. 
Looking to Central America, Costa Rica, going to Panama, Nicaragua, sections of Honduras, especially northern Honduras, including the Bay Islands, Roatan, and then even going offshore of Belize, Ambergris Key, and even for the easternmost part of Belize, in some spots across Guatemala and even Mexico, there could be a lot of flood trigger and rainfall activity as we progress through today. And then across surrounding areas, going to El Salvador, there could still be some periods of heavy rain across some areas as well so please be safe guys if you should encounter uh such conditions the flooding please do not take any unnecessary risks so that is what is expected as it relates to rainfall activity let's go ahead and talk more about the disturbance here we can see it is no longer in that orange shading so last night in the 8 p.m update the chance went down to 30 percent and it has been holding on to that 30 percent into the 2 a.m update so this is going to be moving to the west may move to the uh west southwest as we can see this so the dip right here expected of that low pressure area but regardless though regardless of it developing or not it is likely to produce some periods of a very heavy rain as we head into this weekend but it still has a chance of development and one of the inhibiting factors right now could be a bit of dry air let's go on to that map there we can see so a lot of dry air behind that frontal boundary and uh, out across uh portions of the atlantic of course and there we can see also a little bit of dry air in parts of the Caribbean. So the disturbances within this area here, and we're not seeing much activities producing very limited activity right now. But let's see if it wants to do any last minute dance and try to really get itself together before it moves inland. The shear is not really bad right now. Let's look at it. So here we are taking a look and across the South Caribbean, there we can see those green lines which indicate that the shear is conducive that is what is considered to be favorable because those upper level winds are not displacing all those thunderstorms and cutting them off and preventing the system from growing and intensifying so let's see what happens over the course of the next couple of days that the system has left in the caribbean sea before it eventually makes its way into central america now, as it relates to what models are expecting, more models available now. So this is the latest track guidance. We can see that they're all in agreement about this general motion to the west and uh, even a little dip to the west-southwest. So they're showing that that low pressure center is going to be making its way into Nicaragua. But all the activity is likely to be disorganized in association with it. So that rainfall could be widespread across many other areas in Central America. And then as it relates to intensity, again more models available however we see that most are not showing much development of the system a couple say that yeah this might still make it to a tropical storm and some are even suggesting that it is going to be after it makes its way inland and then moves back into uh, warm water over in the eastern pacific that it may try to develop we'll see how that goes as well once conditions are conducive then that is going to be a possibility with the system and it would acquire a name from the eastern pacific list so if it does not develop here over in the atlantic basin then it is when it's over in the eastern pacific if it develops that it will acquire a name so the last two names on the list for the atlantic season vince and whitney they still stand and there is still a chance that both could be used or even one of them which would be Vince could be used before the hurricane season officially concludes so I'll be keeping you guys posted on that so that's it for now and I hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments I'll respond once I get the chance to do so and remember to always be weatherwise.